Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Hour. I'm really excited to present Carl Ponto of Squash, Squash and Stretch Productions. Today, um, he's going to be speaking about how to reframe your marketing to attract your best clients. And Carl and I have worked together before on some videos, and um, he's just a really great guy and really has a wonderful understanding of how effective videos can communicate a story and emotional connections through video and great branding. So thank you so much, Carl, for showing up today at the Golden Hour on May 11th, 2022. And I'm excited to reconnect with you and get some great tidbits here. So with that being said, I'm going to put myself on mute and let you go for it. Thanks. Thank you very much for having me, Lainey. Um, so yeah, my name is Carl Ponto. My company is called Squash and Stretch Productions. And we tell exceptional stories for exceptional impact. And so today we're going to cover uh, how you can optimize your marketing messages and attract way more of your best clients using stories. And after we go over this reframe, I'll show you some real world examples of companies who use this, these sort of approaches. And by the end, you should hopefully have had at least one aha moment and a good takeaway you can apply to your business. Um, and so to kick things off, I want to start with it's a story about myself. Um, basically, um, you know, why I started my company. And so for me, it's, a, I've been an artist my entire life. I grew up drawing, painting, sculpting, big Legos kid. And I got my passion for storytelling from my dad. He's a really good storyteller. And I knew I wanted to study animation when I saw the first Toy Story film. I was like, ooh, that I gotta do that, that's so cool. And then beginning in 2002, I started to feel like something wasn't quite right with me physically. I'd been a competitive swimmer my whole life, so I knew what I was supposed to feel like. And it wasn't like, oh, my shoulder kind of hurts. It's like a general blah feeling. But by August, they still hadn't figured out what was wrong with me. And I had lost 50 pounds, had sunken cheeks and eyes. I was really pale, started to get really bad headaches. So my parents took me for an MRI up in Walnut Creek and we were waiting around for another appointment when my pediatrician called and said he's gonna drive up from Pleasanton to come talk with us. And we saw him walking up with this big envelope in his hands. You could tell he'd been crying. And he brought us into a little side meeting room. And I remember I was sitting knee to knee with him in this big U-shaped chair with really high armrests kind of leaning forward towards him when he pulled out the results of the MRI and showed me I had two brain tumors. And it felt like I got punched in the chest, I actually moved backwards in my chair. And for the next two weeks, everything sounded like the adults from Peanuts, kind of womp, 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 because never had the flu, never broken any major bones, never been stung by a bee. I'm pretty sure I've never been bitten by a mosquito. So to get brain tumor diagnosis at 15 years old was a complete sucker punch out of nowhere. But I got so much help from friends and family and my high school adjusted my schedule and got me a tutor so I could still graduate on time. And People I barely knew were giving food and gifts and other supports it really inspired me to want to give back and help as many people as I could because I'd probably be dead if it wasn't for all the help that I got. And then in undergraduate schools, I was studying animation. There was a big student digital art design competition I participated in with a big screening at the end of like a thousand people in this big auditorium. I knew maybe 10 people in the room. But when everyone laughed at the joke of my animation, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. I can connect with people and have a bigger impact with animation and storytelling. So after grad school, I started my company and we tell exceptional stories for exceptional impact. And we help tech, biotech, healthcare and professional services companies build strong empathetic connections in order to attract their best clients, investors and employees and overcome big challenges facing the communities and the world. And by helping the sort of, these sort of clients, more people in the world get their lives improved, our clients' business does better. We get a happy client, everyone wins. It's a way for me to have a bigger impact on the, on the world around me and that's why I do what I do. And for me, I'm all about the empathetic connections and using storytelling to build those sort of connections. I, the way I like to put it is if I could cast a spell, like snap my finger sort of thing and guarantee that everyone in the world would be as maximally empathetic as humanly possible, but casting that spell would kill me, I'd still do it. Uh, because I, I think that if people had more empathy, more connections, a lot of the issues we're seeing in the world today when it comes to uh, political divides and racial inequality and um, just kind of other kind of social and societal issues would be solved. And also the bigger problems like climate change and cancer and Alzheimer's that is the world's facing would be solved a lot easier if people were able to connect and work together and really 
empathize with each other. So since magic isn't real, I use stories instead to achieve that bigger goal for uh, my life and for the world. And I mean, as an entrepreneur, I really know how it feels to worry about cash flow and how you're trying to make ends meet. I know how it feels to lose sleep over how to explain the value of your business and yourself. And I know what, how it feels to like feel like there's a piece missing to achieve the success you desire, not knowing what that piece is. And I even know how it feels to kind of hit rock bottom and consider jumping off an overpass, for example. Um, my last full-time job I was at was a local uh, bank branch. And while it was a step up from my other like side jobs, it was not, I was not really good at it. It was not a good fit. I'm much more suited for project-based work rather than operational stuff. And um, so after making a bunch of mistakes, I was called into my boss's office and given the chance to quit. And it was the only time I've ever really been fired from a job. And I just, I felt so lost and adrift in this sea of insignificance and failure. And as I drove home, um, I had to go over this big, tall, curving overpass that connects southbound 680 with eastbound 580. And I seriously considered pulling over, getting out of my car and jumping off because I just felt so lost. But fortunately I didn't. I ended up driving, driving home and uh, talked with my parents about what happened. And after a lot of self-reflection, I realized I needed to focus on my business because that was the best fit for my strengths and passion and desire to impact the world. And it's reasons like that that I'm really, why I'm hosting this workshop and it's to help people build the connections that'll help them when they need it the most and avoid these situations entirely and thrive in the new business world we're in. So when it comes to this reframe, I'm, I wanna be talking about with you guys, fortunately, you don't have to do a huge drastic change in order to see drastic results. And with this really powerful reframe, while it's subtle, does require some effort to do right, but it's absolutely worth it. And it's something that most companies don't do, or at least don't do very well. So, I mean, every day you put this off is gonna be costing you money and it makes you more susceptible to commoditization, which leads to shrinking profit margins, having to haggle over price, dealing with tire kicking clients, which I'm pretty sure pretty much everyone out there can't stand dealing with those sorts of clients. And to help reframe, your way of thinking about it. Um, this big question will help you uh, when you realize the nature of this reframe, which is, are you trying to sell to yourself? And in most cases, you're not your best client. So why is your marketing from your perspective? Why is it talking about things that you care about? So this is a reframe, it's really powerful. You wanna stop talking about what you do as much and this is something I see all the time from on company websites, even ones that are professionally made. I mean, the next time you visit a company's website, count how many sentences start with the words we, us, or our. And it, these, these companies are messaging ends up sound, making them sound like that guy at the bar who's had two drinks too many, who's loudly boasting about his new car and although his golf, ha golf handicap business is going yacht shopping next week. And nobody likes that guy because it's so self-centered. Right. And I... Right. understand completely why people do it it's you like what you do you find it interesting and you know a lot about it the problem is your best clients don't care about it as much as you do right it just they just don't otherwise they do it too and so you it shouldn't take it personally it just you feel the same way about what other people do it's just normal you just have to be aware of it right. so instead of talking about what you do you're going to focus instead on why you do it how you do it and the results of what you do it you want to really look at your businesses like your best clients do. And when talking about your business, you're no longer the hero of your story. You got to make your client the hero and you need to be what's called the guide. So your client is Frodo and you're Gandalf. They're Luke Skywalker, you're Yoda. You can still talk normally. You don't have to talk like Yoda to be the guide, but maybe it'll help. And if you try to be the hero, you're making your clients into the victim. And that is really bad because the victim never changes or grows. They're of no story arc. They're basically hopeless. And that hopelessness is a key distinction that we'll get into in a moment. But first, let's break down what I mean by why, how, and results. So if you remember the story I told you at the beginning, most of it was not about my business. It was all about what drives me. It was about the impact I want to have on the world and it's those sorts of stories that encourage people to share more about themselves with you. And then once they feel heard and understood, then you've made a connection 
And it starts with empathy. It leads to that trust that you need to build the sales, build the connections, get the referrals. And you don't have to have gone through a super traumatic experience to have a story worth telling. It's actually sometimes better um, if you don't have a larger than life, amazing story that, um, because people connect with those who they can relate to. And when you're telling your why story, this is the one part where you can be the hero because it's about your personal experience. And once you've finished telling that, you want to, then you want to become the guy. But sharing your, your why story, what you went through, that why you do what you do, is one of the best ways to quickly build trust with people because you're talking more about yourself and what makes you human and your flaws <laughs> rather than just what you do. Can I interject one thing? Yeah. I think a lot of people get stuck on process. This yeah. Is what we do, this is how we do it. And I think people don't care as much about process as much as outcome, right? They just yeah, and actually the, the next part, the, the how part here, it's yeah. all about reframing that process description yeah. um, to really take it from, we do this, we do this, we do this, to explaining it how, what the client's going to experience when they work with you. Uh, and actually, the 89% of companies now are competing on client experience as a main differentiator. So um, when you're trying to talk about what, what, what you do, you want to reframe it to be instead of we do this, we do this, we do this, to you'll enjoy this, you'll experience this, you'll go through this process. Outcomes, yeah. And here's how you'll feel while you're going through it. Because that experience is worth more to people because it's transformational and they're more likely to share that experience with their friends. And so when you describe it from their perspective, it allows them to see themselves going through it before they actually do it. And they can, if you explain it properly, they'll get it, you'll, they'll know you understand how they feel now. They'll get to see how they're gonna feel while they're working with you. And most importantly, they're gonna understand how they're gonna feel after working with you. And that's really, really powerful. And that's what helps you differentiate your business from your competition. It's not what you do, but it's how people experience what you do that they really care about. And that really leads into the results part, which is the results people actually care about. What does that experience allow them to do that they couldn't do before? And a key thing to remember is nobody buys something because of what it is. Um, it's all about the results of the results of that thing. For example, an apple, you don't buy an apple because it's a physically an apple, you buy it because you like the taste and it has nutrients. Then you enjoy the experience of eating the apple because of how it tastes and the nutrients help you stay healthy and happy have a longer life. That's why you eat an apple. And so when you're explaining the value of your business, it's not what you do, but it's what can your clients now do that they couldn't do before working with you? And Really what everyone sells when you boil it down to kind of its meta level is you're selling people hope. And you're basically they have a problem today and they expect that if they invest in your services, they hope that tomorrow will be better than it is today. And whatever thing you actually do, but when you boil it down, you're really just selling hope. And they want you to transform their lives. Um, it's not just a, so if you're like a contract attorney, it's not the piece of paper or the contract that people care about. It's the business partnership they're able to do and like the collaboration and the, or the access to the resources or the IP that allows their business to go to the next level. And so they get more profitable and they're able to get the higher exit uh, offer from the investors. And so they get to retire early and live the life they dreamed of. That's way more compelling to offer people than I'm a contract attorney, I make contracts. So, and these sorts of tools, these sorts of strategies are not just unproven theories. These companies have used them to become giants, disrupt their industries and become wildly successful. And it really doesn't matter if your business is B2C or B2B or even B2G. All companies are really H to H, which is human to human and humans tell stories. For example, uh, back in the nineties, Apple was 90 days away from bankruptcy. They had a huge product line of like over 600 products that were all about the same. Their marketing was all about the features and benefits and gizmos of for each different product. And no one knew which one they should buy. And they were freaking out because they were gonna be out of money in 90 days. So they brought back 
Steve Jobs, who they had kicked out before, and he narrowed down their offers to four products down from like 600 plus. And they launched the Think Different campaign, which a lot of you may remember. And it was all about emotion and building that connection and empathy and building a tribe of people, uh, a, a following of the community. And it was a huge success. And basically all Mark, uh, Apple's messaging since then has been along that sort of line. And that's why they're now worth like, what I think it's like $2.8 trillion today. They're the biggest company on earth, but they went from being 90 days away from bankruptcy to the biggest company in the world. And then wow. what also helps is they really infuse that message into not just their marketing, but into their daily operations. For example, I heard this great story from a really well-known um, success coach and keynote speaker. And he was um, saying, he told a story about how he was uh, preparing to fly to the next day, fly for like a big keynote he was going to do in another country, or not another country, new city the following day. And so he was packing up and he was with his like cup of coffee and he was checking his notes on his uh, iPod, his, uh, his Apple laptop. And he leaned over to make some changes and spilled coffee onto the keyboard and just bzz, bzz, fried the whole laptop. It's just dead. So half dressed, he's freaking out. He takes it to the local genius bar and goes, uh, I got I have this big keynote. They're paying me like over $100,000 to give this keynote. My flight's in a couple hours, uh, help. And the genius does some diagnostics on the laptop and sees that the hard drive is fine, but the motherboard is just fried. And so, oh, also your, like, your warranty just expired last month. But instead of saying, oh, sorry, tough tickets, you're out of luck, the genius basically said, okay, we're gonna take your existing hard drive out of this computer, we're gonna put it in basically the exact same computer you already have, but brand new, not foldable with coffee, will set up all like the new computer uh, setup settings so it's exactly the same. We're gonna ship it to the nearest Apple store to your hotel in the city you're flying to, and it'll be ready by the time you get there. So this guy goes back home, finishes packing, gets on his flight, flies to the destination, goes to the, his hotel, checks in, goes to the Apple store, he walks in, they bring out his fresh new computer he checks to make sure everything's all set up the slides are there he goes the following day to give his keynote no problem that probably cost apple several thousand dollars in the computer and like the shipping but they made a not just a client for life but an evangelist for life that guy is not going to buy a non-apple computer from anyone ever no matter what great deal they offer them no matter what fancy gizmos they are like perks and benefits they offer he had an amazing experience as an Apple customer. And so that like, and they are all about providing client experience. And then the similar thing with Nike. Nike, when they're starting off was basically like a unknown brand. And what really put them on the map was this ad. If you let me play, remember this campaign, all about encouraging and supporting girls to play sports. And if you notice here on this ad, they didn't even say Nike, they just have the swoosh, but all the things they list here are all the results that girls and women have when they play sports. And they're all things that any good parent would love for their daughter to have in their life. Like, like themselves more, have more self-confidence, will suffer less depression, 66% less likely to get breast cancer, more likely to leave a man who beats me. All these things that just show that when girls play sports, their lives are better. They slap their logo on it but it's all emotion. It doesn't talk about what they do or their products or services. It's just all the impact they wanna have on the world. And they still do it today. This ad here, if you think that your dreams are crazy, show them what crazy dreams can do. It talks nothing about the product, but it, it tells a story. It, it helps people, it addresses this need people have to feel like they're told that their dreams are crazy, they can't do these things, but they know that they can do it and, the, and Nike is encouraging them to go and achieve their dreams and make their impact on the world and be successful. All from this short little sentence here. Again, later on, like another ad, be the hero you didn't have. That's six words, but already like hit you right in the feels like you didn't have any like one supporting you growing up. You can now be that supportive character in someone else's life by being a star athlete and achieving greatness through sports and Nike's there to help you along the way. 
not talking about products, not talking about services, not talking about features and benefits, talking all about the experience, the impact, the emotion. This last one, do things history can only dream of. Again, it's seven words, but these are some of the most powerful ads that took Nike from obscurity to the global brand they are today because they realized something that most business owners, most companies don't realize is that we make decisions with emotions every time. And yes, that includes you. What those six companies know is that they're not competing over your money. They're really not, they're not going for your money. You try to go for people's money right away, you'll miss it because people don't like being sold to. They can tell when you're trying to get them to open their wallets. What you're really competing over are people's attention and their emotions. You gotta grab their attention because there's so many things competing for people's attention. If you can't grab it, you're gonna miss out. And it's the emotion. If you can grab people's attention and the emotions, then the money's gonna follow. And stories are the best way to grab people's attention and engage them emotionally. Can I ask you a question? Yep. So I would think that part of being able to tell a good story is being able to take risks, right? Oh yeah. Someone in like, let's just say the shoe industry, which is Nike, they, someone would have to be a risk taker because they would have to do something that was never done by someone before. And so I think in a lot of industries, people don't tell real stories because they think that it's risky and they're supposed to tell the same story that everybody else did. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, that's what Tom's did is they, they basically, they had this crazy mission of, and like crazy offer of, buy one, give one. When you buy one pair of our shoes, we're going to give one away because our story is all about helping people in need. And that took them from this startup to being, I think they were worth like over $600 million and they were finally bought out by another company. But it's, they did something that stood out and it, it engaged people on an emotional level and was more about the social impact than just making a, a profit. And um, so yeah, when it comes to telling these sorts of stories, it, it requires being vulnerable, it requires taking a risk, and it requires um, opening up to people. But it's absolutely necessary because when you, like I said earlier, when you share those sorts of stories, it inspires other people to want to reciprocate. And when you connect with them on an emotional level and an empathetic level, then you build the trust that leads to those sales or, or the um, the new hires, that sort of stuff. So it's it can be hard to do, but it's absolutely essential for success these days because people just expect that deeper connection with the businesses they do they do business with. And um, I mean, there's tons of uh, evidence that this is this uh, is successful as well. It's like there's um, when it comes to getting more revenue, some research research by Headstream. If people love your brand story, they're going to be 55 percent more likely to buy the product in the future. 44% will share the story and 15% will buy the product immediately. Uh, if you're looking for increased profits in their book, Corporate Culture and Performance, Harvard professors John P. Cotter and James L. Heskett found that companies which successfully communicated their purpose and value could achieve profit performance that was 750 times greater than those that didn't, which is bonkers. Improved understanding of complex products and services. Those of you like tech, biotech have some new uh, cutting edge piece of technology you're trying to um, market and sell. In his book, Actual Minds, Possible Worlds, the author estimates that facts are approximately 22 times more likely to be remembered if they are part of a story. And it makes sense because our brains are wired to tell stories. And um, it's just when you wrap information in that sort of narrative, it makes it easier for people to understand. And finally, higher close rate. According to research by Dr. Robert Caldini, people prefer to say yes to those with whom they are share more common ground. And in his research, those who have found similarities before negotiations were almost twice as likely to come to a successful conclusion with outcomes worth 18% more to both parties. So it goes without saying that I think everyone would agree they want those sort of results uh, for their business. And there is a caveat to this reframe which is while the ideas might seem simple to grasp, applying them is not as easy as you to do on your own. And so um, I know we're recording this, I'll put a, uh, send a link to with Lainey so she can add it to the comments of the YouTube video that 
Um, you can book a, I want to have a 30 minute session or basically review your existing marketing message on your website and give you um, some uh, action items to how you can improvise, not improvise, but improve and optimize your marketing messaging using stories. So um, that is the extent of my uh, presentation. And uh, thank you all. Hope you, you found it enjoyable and helpful and got at least one big aha moment from the experience. Awesome job. Yeah. I. I, I really love what you said. And I think from a, a strategic perspective, everyone's telling a story, whether or not they're conscious of the story or crafted it with intention, they're still selling a story. And I think part of the message that you're sharing is why not craft it for, for the results that you want and not have it done by default, which is what most people do, right? Yeah. I mean, it everyone people are we're wired to tell stories is part of what makes us human it's not just like a marketing gimmick or a tool it's storytelling is what humans do at parts it's, it's just it's a part of our nature and so you're you're a storyteller whether you think you are or not and it's just a matter of how uh, uh effective a storyteller you are and whether you're telling in the right way and and um right. it's that's one of the reasons why i love what i do because when people have realized they have all these stories that they Kind of were vaguely aware of or didn't realize how they could use them more effectively. Um, it's uh, it's super valuable and it's, it gives them way more confidence in the work they're doing and it gives them that uh, focus and their ability to connect with people. And it's um, like I said at the beginning, it's really what I think my purpose in life is. And so I love helping people uh, connect with the people that are most important with them using stories, and that leads to them getting more revenue or finding that uh, the right connections for their business and. Um, they're able to have a bigger impact on their, the world in a positive way. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Carl. And um, like he said, I'll put um, in the link, to make an appointment with Carl in the chat for a consultation. And we'll look forward to seeing you at the next golden hour. Great job, Carl. Thank you very much.